who hold states accountable for results for students. And that includes students in our protected groups. Um, that is where we need to have a greater flashlight. And Pushing for our kids, State Superintendent Joy Hoffmeister is here to discuss the deep budget cuts school districts are now facing. Good morning to you. Thank you so much for joining us at such a very important time. Absolutely. Thank you. It, it's great to be talking about things that are so critical. Uh, for our kids. We're so glad to have you. Our viewers have a lot of questions too. And we will start with this. Schools have lost $100 million just since the start of this year. First of all, where is all of this money going? And I mean, you've referred to this as a crisis. What are you doing right now to help fix this problem? Right now, districts are trying to prepare for their budgets for next year. Uh, of course, we asked for a supplemental appropriation, and we are grateful that the legislature did give back $51 million just to get through this this semester, but the real looming crisis is what's to come in the next school year. And you've said that possibly one of the uh, coping mechanisms can be to condense our districts. We have something more than 500 school districts here in the state, but won't that exacerbate the problem of overcrowding in our classrooms? This is something the legislature had discussed. Um, I am not in favor of having a broad sweeping type of consolidation happening at the legislative level. I think that's too important to involve. We must involve people that this affects and uh, that that is actually not a measure that would save a lot of money. Sometimes you're just transferring transportation costs, for example. What we really have to realize is with these budget cuts, we're talking about the reduction of advanced coursework. Uh, the arts, music, these are part of a well-rounded education. We are going to see every district and every student is going to end up suffering through this. And some districts have taken extreme measures. We know teachers are being let go. We just reported 92 administrators are being let go just in one district. Schools are, school days are getting cut. Field trips are getting cut. As a former public school teacher, yeah. I know you can't think that that is good for our students. No, it, it is not. And there's not going to be one district in Oklahoma that's going to be able to provide more services for kids next year. That's a reality. What we are seeing right now are conversations with stakeholders, with parents, which I support that. We've got to include those who are being served in the way we solve this. Uh, I'm very concerned about moving to four-day weeks. I don't think that's a very good long-term solution, yet we understand that folks are having to make difficult decisions and those that they would not ordinarily want to choose. Yeah, we're going to hear from our viewers, a lot of them saying that that's a financial burden on them also to try to figure out child care for an extra day of the week. But you ran on a platform of extending teacher pay or raising teacher yes. pay by $5,000. That sadly does not seem to be able to come to pass given the budget deficit right now. How can our state possibly retain talent to teachers and keep them here, not just bring them here, but keep them here if we're not willing to pay what's commensurate with other states. Well, this is a problem, and I'll tell you, uh, you know, I'm new to politics. I came out of an education and a business background. So from a business perspective, I could not run my business the way we are uh, right now running our uh, state finances. This is a challenge. Uh, there are variables outside the control of those in the legislature, and I understand that. Uh, but we do have to operate with what we have and make decisions um, and take some of the uncertainty out of it. Uh, it is certainly something I'm going to continue to advocate for. We've got to provide for the proper and a, an appropriate investment in education. If we even you know, want to make certain that we keep momentum moving for students and lifting education outcomes, but part of that answer is we must solve the teacher shortage. We have new standards, uh, and I've said we have um, and we could have the highest standards in the world. But if you don't have the teachers to teach them, what good are they? They'll never be able to help students reach their full promise and potential. So that has to be solved. I'm glad you touched on that because with the teacher shortage or the teachers wanting to move to Texas because they pay better and they have better job yeah. security. Our state was recently ranked 46th in the country by Education Week annual report based on how our students perform, based on test scores, 46th in the nation. How do you assure parents that yeah. their, their students are getting a quality education here. Well, and this is, this is a very, very important point. Um, when we start to have momentum moving us forward, which we have seen recently, we have to recognize that that momentum will stall. And our kids are certainly uh, are the future of our state. We have to make these investments. These are tough times. Uh, we know that the investment is part of how we will continue to build uh, an economic 
future for our state, but for our kids individually, they deserve this. So how do we lift out of that? I think that we do that in the smartest way possible, and I don't think moving to a four-day week, for example, is the way you grow. Sure. Uh, you, maybe you can maintain, but that is not good enough. We need to move forward, and we, we are going to have to do that with a high-quality uh, base of teachers and attracting and keeping our great, passionate, experienced teachers is part of that solution. So I have yet to give up on uh, making certain that we address that um, sooner rather than later.